What's up guys, ViperFV here, and today we're gonna go ahead and do the budget build. Uh, about a month ago or so, I posted a shopping guide on the budget parts and the reason why I picked the parts that I picked. Uh, but pretty much what it comes down to is I wanted to make sure that I had smart audio, which lets you control your VTX channels through your OSD on your goggles. Um, you also use a Lua script as well if you wanted to, uh, just a couple options in your radio. Uh, but I also wanted to make sure it has an F4 processor and make sure it's future proof. So in about a year's time that you're not wanting to upgrade it to something else or scrap the entire build and buy something else completely. Uh, so what we're going to do is on the build that we're going to do today is going to be the budget pro build. I'm not going to build the budget base build just because it's pretty much goes together exactly the same way. Uh, but you can build the budget pro build, uh, budget base build for about $120 or less. Um, the budget pro build comes in around $160 or less. Uh, the real main difference between the budget pro build and the budget base build is the pro build has a little bit better camera. It also does have a better VTX that so can go up to a one watt so you get a lot further range. And also the motors are a little bit better quality that's using the Emacs Eco motors. Uh, so if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the video description down below. It does have affiliate links in it to help to support the channel and helps me out tremendously. Uh, so if you're interested in building something cheaply uh, and building something that's pretty good and it'll be able to stand up to a crash, go ahead and check out my video description down below and check out those links. Um, I also will have some videos down there below too for setting up Betaflight and also setting up Beheli. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the build and see how it comes out. All right, so we have our components laid out here on the bench, and we're gonna go ahead and go over them individually. So first things first, we have the Emacs 2306 2400 KV motors. They're great little motors, and they come in at about $1199 each. Then we also do have the Foxier Aero V2 FPV camera. Nice camera for the price. And then we also have the Eosheen TX1200. It does have smart audio. It does go up to 40 channels and up to a video output of um, one watt. And the next thing you're gonna be using is the Mamba stack. This does include the F4 pr uh, processor with the flight controller, along with the 401 ESC that I believe does go up to 6S. Then we're gonna be using the TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. And this is really dependent on what you wanna use as your receiver, either a Free Sky, Fly Sky, or a Crossfire, or even Spectrum. Next up in the build, we have the frame. And this is like a knockoff Nova frame. It's not exactly like a Nova frame because the arms don't have that signature Nova look, but the top plate and how the GoPro straps onto the top makes it what I believe, like a like a knockoff Nova frame. But that's the reason why we picked it, because not only is it a really, really durable frame, uh, that top section where the GoPro can strap on, you don't have to worry about purchasing a GoPro or a 3D printed part to mount your GoPro on top. So besides the price, which comes at $21, this frame does have a lot of space inside, which will make it a lot easier for beginners. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove all the screws from the top plate so we can get clear access, so we can go ahead and install our F4 flight controller as well as all our other components. So right here, I wanted to show you that on each arm, there is three screw holes and we remove the ones in the middle. Those will pretty much let us go ahead and install our stack screws and it does not um, destroy the integrity or the strength of the frame in any way. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to the next step. So going over some tools that we'll need in this build, we do need some type of hex drivers to remove nuts and bolts. I will leave a link to all these tools down in the video description down below. Uh, you also do need to get some thread locker and this will be used to put on the bolts for the motors to prevent them from vibrating loose and losing some screws or a motor. You also do need some solder as well as some a soldering iron and maybe a set of helping hands and a couple other little things that I do have, show you guys here on the build. So what I like to go ahead and start off with is the motors. And when you're mounting your motor onto the arm of the, fly, of the quad, uh, make sure that the motor wires are going down the arm where they're nice and neat. And when you're picking out your bolts that go into the motor, make sure they're not too long uh, because if they are too long, they will impact the stator on the motor bell or the motor and cause an electrical short 
or it can even cause some video noise if it's just barely contacting. So be aware of that when you're installing the bolts to the motors. And when you're installing the bolts to the motor, make sure you are using thread locker because they will back out the vibrations of the motor. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on. So now we're going to go ahead and mount the flight controller onto the frame. And you see a little arrow there that is facing forward. So make sure that you have the arrow facing the front of the quadcopter, just like so. So now what I'm doing is I'm installing the standoffs from the stack into the frame. And just make sure that you, when you do this, uh, you dry fit it first and then install the screws to the bottom. And then you're able to go ahead and um, slide the 401 ESC right on top of those standoffs. Do not put the screws on yet because we'll do that later. Now, if you notice, I already put the zip ties on the arms to hold the wires, to hold them nice and securely, because we're gonna go ahead and trim these wires to the ESC and just go ahead and hold them like that, no, nothing fancy. And just go ahead and make sure you have enough room and make sure that you actually do it a little further out. Uh, it's better to have them too long than have them too short and having to go ahead and add extra wire. So just go ahead and cut them off like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do all four and then pretend all the wires and then go ahead and solder the motor wires to the actual ESC as you see here. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the XT60 and get that all wired up. This right here is a soldering jig. It helps hold the XT60 securely down so you can go ahead and get a nice solid connection. Uh, you wanna make sure this thing is strong because if you do have a battery eject, you don't want that ripping off causing a short. Do take note that you wanna make sure that you have the red wire to the plus side of the XT60 and also the negative, the black side to the minus side of the XT60. Uh, just put some heat shrink on there just use a lighter or even the soldering iron to shrink that all up and then pre-tin the wires on the opposite side. So now we're gonna go ahead and install this on the 401 ESC. And just make sure you have the negative, the plus side on the plus side, and then the negative on the negative side. Do make sure that you, if you're using lower heat on your soldering iron, you might have to turn that up uh, just because it does take a lot of heat to solder to the 401 ESC. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install our VTX. Now this little clear plastic piece came with the Mamba stack. So go ahead and put that underneath the VTX. It's a real great insulator and it fits perfectly in that space right back there. And right now what I'm going to do is I want to install it with a plug facing towards the front of the, of the quadcopter. I would suggest to actually put the plug towards the back just because it will make the mounting the MMCX connector and the antenna a lot easier. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to install some nylon screws to the VTX. Um, I didn't want to use metal just because I was afraid that there are some capacitors on top that will conduct some electricity and just didn't want to have any type of shorts. So I think it's the best bet is to use some nylon screws with nylon nuts and to secure those to the frame with the VTX and you should be good to go. Now what I'm going to do is install the connector to the VTX. At this point, I did not do it, but I would suggest it is to remove the plus and the minus wires from the this pin right here to the actual camera because we're going to be powering the camera off the 5 volt and also the ground of the flight controller instead of the actual VTX. Now, if you want to use the VTX, then don't worry about removing those wires. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install a capacitor that came with the Mamba flight controller stack. And to install this on your quadcopter and connect it to the ESC, just make sure that the stripe side of the capacitor is the negative side. So it also will have a longer lead to before you cut them. And when you're cutting them, make sure that you make them as short as possible. So then you can go ahead and um, solder that to the ESC. I heard that the shorter the leads are, the better it is. And this does help clean up the video and also clean up your system noise in the system. That's why you'd want to use a, a capacitor, especially a low ESR capacitor. 
Now we're taking the standoffs off the flight controller part of the stack and we're screwing those to the screws of the ones that we put on before where the ESC split, slid over. So we're installing those standoffs to make them nice and tight and do all four of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to install the F4 flight controller on top of the ESC, uh, making sure that the front arrow, that little arrow pointing, is pointing forward or towards the front of the quadcopter. Um, then let's go ahead and connect the 401 ESC header into from the ESC to the flight controller, and then let's go ahead and slide that on top of the stack. Do not install any screws yet because you're going to be um, soldering on top of this board and you don't want to by accident solder a plastic nylon screw. Right here we have what the mama came with is a nice pinout diagram of all the pins on this flight controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the red wire and the black wire from the VTX to these two pads right here and just go ahead and pre-tin the pads on the flight controller and then go ahead and uh, pre-tin the wires on the VTX wires and then just go ahead and connect those plus and minus as shown in the video. Go ahead and install the smart audio wire from the VTX and also the video wire um, to the VTX. So we're going to be using these two pads. I already pre-tinned those right there. And uh, just go ahead and do that real quick. Now what we're going to do is install the FPV camera and it comes with this mount here. Since this is a mini camera, it's not a full size, we have to use this mount. All the cameras do come with these, so just go ahead and use these screws that it comes with and just screw those on there. And then we're going to go ahead and mount it to the front or the top plate of how we have it set up. And it does come with the screws and everything, so you just have to screw those into the sides and uh, tighten those up. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is it does have a plug as well, so we plug those in. Um, and we're stripping the wires, the plus and the minus, and then we're also taking the video from the camera, and then we're gonna go ahead and do is solder it onto the flight controller like so. So as you already see, I have the Crossfire Nano receiver mounted actually underneath the ESC there, and I'm using the Immortal T antenna. Uh, but here in a second, I'm going to show you the RXSR receiver uh, right there. And we're going to be wiring this up to the S-Bus, 5-Volt, and ground pad here on the flight controller, which is on the top left, right below the LED space. And right here, we're wiring up our Crossfire Nano receiver, and we're going to use the 5-Volt ground, and then we're going to use a UART, since we uh, Crossfire uses the UART system. Uh, first pad goes... Uh, first uh, wire goes to the receive pad, and then the last pad goes to the TX pad. Um, you have to make sure that the RX is going to TX, and the TX is going to the RX. So I'm just checking right here to make sure that my soldering uh, it went alright, which it did. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move on to the next step. So right here we have a multimeter, which I'll leave a link to this in the video description down below. Um, it does have the continuity function, which does make an audible beep when you touch these two prongs together. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to the battery terminal here, and just to see if we hear an audible beep, uh, which we don't. So we go ahead and move on to the next step. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the antenna to the VTX. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to strap some zip ties around the um, VTX just to give it uh, a little bit more strength. And this pretty much is going to go around the cable for the um, antenna for the VTX and then also one around the actual balance, uh, not the balance lead, but the actual power lead to the battery just in case we do have an injection or something pulls it, it doesn't mess up the uh, ESC. Go ahead and trim that off. Now we're gonna go ahead and do is get the top plate aligned and the little plug on the camera. Let's go ahead and put that to the side because we're gonna need that for to shut off the OSD on the actual camera itself. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to install the top plate screws. Go ahead and get those all nice and tight because this build is pretty much complete. 
So this is pretty much what the final quad should look like when you're all complete. Uh, came out really, really nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a weight uh, without the battery straps or props along with a battery. So putting it on the scale, we have a weight of 326 grams, which is really, really respectable for a, a freestyle quad. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install some battery straps. I had these laying around on my bench. I think these came from a quad box, I believe, or maybe even a drone drop. I'm not sure. And I just went ahead and put that one by for the GoPro and then the other one just around the body. I didn't use the slots. I just went ahead and just use, I like to slide it underneath the top plate. Just make it a lot easier. All right, so that does it for the budget pro build. If you found this video helpful, uh, go ahead and give it a like. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I do tons of tutorials, tons of beta flight tutorials, uh, tons of reviews on different products related to FPV. Uh, but in a future video, what we're going to do is we're going to go out for a flight and I'll give you guys um, pretty much firsthand experience of how it did. And if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section down below. And don't forget that I do have affiliate links to all the products that I discussed in this video down below. And if you do use those affiliate links, I do get a small commission, but it does help the channel out tremendously. So I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.